Leader of the prescribed separatist group, the indigenous people of Biafra, says he has the capacity to end insecurity in the southeast of Nigeria within two minutes if he's released from detention. Kanu spoke outside the federal high court in Abuja on Tuesday after trial judge Bintang Yako rejected his bail application. Kanu also dissociated himself from the spate of insecurity in the southeast of Nigeria and accused politicians from the region of masterminding the meltdown for selfish reasons. Arise News Analyst Daya Shibale joins us now to look at the position taken by Namdi Kanu on the matter of insecurity in the southeast. Good afternoon, Mr. Shibale. Welcome to Newsday. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here as usual. Good afternoon. Absolutely. Right. So I, I know you've said in the past that whatever needs to be done to tackle insecurity, you're in support of it. Yeah. Does that, are you making room for Namdi Kanu's potential release if he's able to help us see some improvement in insecure, insecurity in the southeast. Yes, if he renounces a, a rebellion, there's no problem. That's why it's been kept. It's a security risk. But let's look at what he said. It's a chicken and egg situation. That if two minutes, if, you know, the, the insecurity will stop. But they have to release him first. Mm -hmm. okay. Without releasing him, there is a, the, the Monday work boycott going on fervently in his name. Uh, I think, you see, you could see from that uh, video, he's visibly upset and shaking. Maybe that's what he said. That's why he said what he said. But nobody can take him seriously on that score. Because the security passes there. That's why the fact that he's in custody and the insecurity is being perpetrated in his name. And he has, ever since he has been asking for bail, which has been consistently denied, he has never said, okay, if I renounce rebellion, what will you do to me? You should start from there. You cannot challenge the authority of the state, in the custody of the state, violate the laws of the land and expect uh, some reprieve from the law or the state. So you should know where to begin. Although I must concede, there is no denying that he has some influence. Mm -hmm. He has some influence. And you see, uh, we have to talk about the Igbos as a race now. The Igbos are Nigerians. They are Nigerians. We fought a war. We all know what led to the war, that the war started. And then the war ended. There was reconstruction, rehabilitation, and all that. And I'm sure we have learned our lessons. To many Igbos, it's like an embarrassment. You get me? But it is not easy to just put him down like that. Because they say blood is thicker than water. It's like the same thing you have in this insecurity in the entire country based on religion. See, our soldiers who are Muslims, you get me, uh, are hard put to want to take on their brothers of the same faith. That is there. That is there. It is not even in the north. You get me, you are talking of uh, uh, harassment, farmers issue. You are talking of a rural grazing and, and all that. The only country in the north is Fulani. Hmm. The others are Fulanis. And, but their roots are, you know, they're harshmen. Fulani harshmen. And they're in government. So that affinity is always there. That's why Buhari says sometimes that if he was, when he was you know, defending this grazing, something, hmm. that if he, was, if, he, if, he, if he didn't go to the army, he would be a Fulani harshman. So, that is part of our unity in diversity. But uh, Kanu is being taken on legally. You get me? Mm. The state is handling him legally. Let him do the needful. I'm sure he'll be free tomorrow. Mm. All right, Let so him do the needful. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you know, sometimes you can't help but uh, <clears throat> observe a seemingly helpless response to terror activities in the southeast, especially by the region's leaders. I'm talking about the governors here. Yes. And this 
oftentimes fuels, uh, you know, suspicions of uh, complicity to a large extent, although no government would want to associate him, so they associate themselves to such scenarios. But what's, what's your take here in that uh, scene? Uh, These are uh, what people say, you know, based uh, on what they see. Yes, they are correct. That, you know, it's part of what I said, and blood is thicker than water. You see, I don't want to mention names. I don't want to implicate any governor. But you could see that the governors are trying to end that Monday strike. They, they put people on the road and things. But you see, it's an insurgency. It's an underground thing. See, the support is not spoken but implied. Mm. You get me? You cannot, see, I said, I will just say blood is thicker than water. That should really explain it. And I under, you understand what I mean? Why are you asking <laughs> me? <laughs> blood is thicker than water. You get me? That, that's part of the underlying current. But then, on the surface, let's calm. I'm sure, see, if Kadu comes to contest as a politician, you will not win. Do you get me now? You will not win in the southeast. But you see, there is something we call uh, nuisance value. You see, the, the, what he does as in nuisance value, but then it's condoned somewhat by a section. Otherwise, it will not be in business. Some lawmakers went with him to court. Do you get me now? Right. So, and he, he, his, his rebellion should not be condoned. If you leave it at that, the Arewa used to come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Obasa, the Aududua, Amotekun, and all that. See, we have a situation where many warlords. That's what destroys Somalia. That's what destroys Somalia. Maybe never reach that stage. You are still under the, the rule of law. It does not need to throw uh, Molotov cocktails at uh, governors in power by saying they are complicit. They are maintaining law and order. They were voted there. It was never voted in. Mm -hmm. If he wants his freedom, let him relinquish rebellion. You get me? And offer to work with government mm -hmm. to stop it. But are you seeing any sign towards uh, relinquishing that? Uh, that is him, him uh, relinquishing rebellion. Mm -hmm. I mean, religion. Hmm. Well, you never know. Hmm. You, you never know. He's a human being. He's of, he has suffered long enough. You see, he's agitated. He's talking. He's, he does, I'm sure he doesn't want to die in prison. You know, he bolted sometimes. They retrieved him. Mm -hmm. They brought him back. He's on trial. There is a limit to human endurance. He's invoking some sentiments and emotions. All right. But then, then, I tell you, he was, have come to stay in Nigeria. And they are waiting to get the highest price, which is the presidency. That's the truth. Let's leave it at that for now. Okay, well, Mr. Shivali, like you said, he's been incarcerated for uh, since what, in time. June of 2021. But uh, you don't see, do you see any any potential truth in what he's saying that some of these governors are in fact complicit that they might be behind some of the, these um, the insecurity that we're witnessing there? Is it worth actually investigating to find out whether no, he's just? I give it no credence. You, would, so you, us, you, you don't that. want us to even try. I, I am giving, I'm so, so you asking me, yes. and I'm answering you. Okay. I give it no credence. You see, um, a sinking man will grasp at a straw. And you know the dilemma of the governors. Some of them even have sympathy for what he's doing, but they don't want to be publicly seen as doing that. Mm. He should know his limit, too, just like his people to know his limit. Uh, government will not, I can say that, harm him. Do you get me? Because of the sentiments he wills, the influence, the former influence mm. he wills in the southeast. You get me? But for him to say that if he comes out, even he did not say he will not only restore peace, he will deal with those doing it. Those doing it are his agents. How is that logical? Mm. Uh, how is that logical? That's an illogicality. Uh, but then, it's in custody. It's, and it looks upset. Mm -hmm. See, deprivations can make people say so many things. So, I do not give, no, I don't want to give credence to what he said as complicity. But what's complicity? They are trying to stop it. 
they are trying to stop people from obeying the orders of his agents. Mm -hmm. That is the complicity. If the complicity still was there, then every Monday there will be no work. Mm -hmm. The entire South East. Mm -hmm. But the governors are you know, trying to stop that by all means, all right. as diplomatically as they can under the circumstances. Indeed. Mr. Tayo Shubawali, a right yes. news analyst, I'd like to thank you for your thoughts on this issue. It's good to have you with us as always. Mm -hmm.